Uh, we did hear from Theresa May today and Corbyn mm -hmm. and Farron and Sturgeon and I think from the Greens and Play. We, we didn't see Paul Nuttall at all. Where is he? I don't know. I've, I've, texted, I've exchanged messages with him today, but I don't know exactly where he is in the country. The rumour was he was hiding in his house. <laughs> I don't think so, no. He's done that before, though, hasn't he? He goes into hiding when he doesn't want to face people. That no, he's be... had a very busy time and I think he's entitled to a bit of a rest after this, which is why I'm on here talking to you. Tonight. He's the leader of your party and he, he can't be connecting very well mm. with voters if you've only well, managed I, to get one I, I'm the Brexit elected. spokesman and I think right. what's going to be really relevant in this, as was being discussed there, is, uh, you know, we, as Paul said, a victim of our own success. Yeah. This is, you know, politics is a funny old business. We have the, late, the Conservative Party with this surge of votes purely on the back of 24, 25 years of hard work by UKIP and our the fact that we got the referendum, the fact that we won the referendum, and this is probably the most undeserved political uh, victory in, uh, in British political history. Uh, we, have, we have Mrs May, who was a Remainer, Conservative government that can campaign to remain in. They've now got the task of taking us out, and where UKIP is going to be relevant mm. is because very soon it's going to become apparent that Mrs May is not going to deliver well, a Brexit that the people what, thought they voted for. What Nigel Farage said is, if in two years' time, it's quite hard, isn't it, to write a manifesto called the If in Two Years' Time Party. I mean, clearly people like the track she's on because she's had an extraordinary electoral day today so they're not coming back to you for the well, if in two years time I think it's not I don't think it's going to take two years I think it's going to be much quicker than that because if you read the government's white paper on what they plan to do what they plan to do is to actually take us out of the EU in name yeah. but in substance we'll still be members we're looking at an election that's in just over a month yeah. now how many candidates are you going to field you, you've lost one of your key donors you don't seem to have the voter base hasn't left. been a key donor for a very long time. And have he you never got was, the money then to he field never was. What, We always come candidates? up with the money. Don't forget, we don't have big business, we don't have the unions, but we've always come up with the money to fight so elections. So how many candidates will you be fielding I don't fielding know, then? because I don't know how many they're going to be, because I'm not at the centre of the planning for that. We fielded about 600 last time. We'll put as many in as we possibly can. Yes, we're suffering from this problem that people think that Theresa May is going to deliver Brexit. We're talking to with this with our own uh, voters, our own say, activists. But you could just say, our job's done. You know but, what? An amazing electoral success, job's done, pack up, go well, home. our job is to get Britain out of the European Union. What's happened since last June the 23rd? Absolutely nothing, except mm. they triggered Article 50, which is the wrong way to go about it anyway. Nothing's happened. Nothing's going to happen for another two years. And at the end of that, not a single law repealed, not a single law amended, the entire body of EU law incorporated into UK law. So if law. that is the Doesn't gist now like your job, is it right? to go on um, fairly odd minority issues like the banning of the burqa. Is that going to be helpful well, to you? Um, I think that personally, I think that that, that that was a press conference that was planned a very long time ago. Um, unfortunately, it then looked like we were leading the campaign on it, which we're not. It was just an issue. And if it had been up to me, we would have pulled that. But that's so, so you don't want made. to run as an anti-Islam party? Uh, we're not running as an anti-Islam party. There are elements of that. It's about cultural uh, integration that we're running on and actually defending people's rights under our laws and our customs. Right. That's what that's about. And that is something that is a part of a bigger package. And if, it, if we made a mistake, it was making it appear we were leading on it, which we're not. But even, I mean, a month ago you were writing, weren't you, that um, we should stop calling it Islam, we should return to what the West used to call it, Mohammedanism. It's a death cult born and steeped in 1,400 years of violence and bloodshed, perfectly rational fear of Islam. Yeah, and which you, part of those factual statements would people argue with? Well, I guess the voters are arguing mm. with it because they heard you say that and you've only got one re-elected councillor tonight. I don't think that was, I don't think they didn't vote for our councillors in this election because, you of, don't speeches, think that's a at because all. of speeches I've made in the European Parliament. I think the reason that we lost is because so many people actually do think that our job's done and think that Theresa May is going to deliver. Our job isn't done and Theresa May isn't going to deliver. So why isn't Paul Nuttall out here then making that message clear? I know you said he's having a rest or he's in his house or he's locked up or something. No, but I didn't say that. You said that. No, you said he probably needs a rest. I he's said he needed a busy. rest. I didn't say he was locked up in his house. You said that. But He's, we are he's in the middle of a general election He's run a very difficult campaign. campaign. Right. He's had a very disappointing day. Uh, he's probably with his feet up having a drink, watching me but doing my bit on one. here. The hard one's yet to come. We've got a All the more a reason for him election. to have a rest on Friday night, then. <laughs> right. So you don't have a problem with that? No, I don't. Paul works very hard. I see him work very hard all the time, and I'm happy to come and do this tonight and talk about where we're going on Brexit. It's not really whether we see him. It's whether the, mm. the public sees him, isn't it? It's whether he, he feels out and about, and what from today's result... You'd suggest there has been a failure to connect somewhere along the lines with the voter, well, wouldn't you? I, would, I, I wouldn't say there's a failure to connect. You've seen people on there tonight saying, 
that they think, oh, UKIP's job's done. And, and in a way, that's because we were so successful in doing what we did in getting the referendum or winning the referendum. And so many people who actually think that Theresa May is going to deliver this, uh, ref this Brexit. And she is not. Because if you look at what they plan to do, at the end of three years after the referendum, Hardly anything at all will have changed. Mm. Nothing will have changed. Uh, and we're seeing all these ridiculous stories about paying them 100 billion uh, euros or pounds, is it? I'm not sure. Which I think was entirely cooked up between Mr Juncker you and Mrs May anyway. Who the voters trust, do you, though? That's the bottom Well, line. I'm not sure uh, in the current climate that they trust many people. Right. The one thing that they can trust UKIP is to do what it says because that's exactly what we've done for 25 years. Joe Patton, nice to have you in here. Thank you.